Well, um, if you guys get an opportunity to uh, see some of these guys in red shirts out there that put this thing together, uh, Jeremy and, and all the staff, uh, do a big hello. This is, uh, I've been doing this for over 40 years, and the Hook Care Summit is the highlight of, of my year. It is, it's the, the biggest educational opportunity, but putting together a clinic of this size is a monumental task. So stop by these people who never get to enjoy sitting around and listening to lectures. They're always scurrying around, making sure things work and, uh, and, and tell them thanks. Excuse me, I was asked to do a thing on uh, on just some tool tips, just some uh, little ideas that I've come across the, over the years of shoeing. And it's interesting because uh, this is the third class and every class has got somebody who goes, hey, how about this? I've never heard of it before. Some really cool things. So we'll add these as we go. Nail cutters, it's a really interesting trick that uh, Vet Tech has us do. Um, you take a pair of nail cutters how you uh, drive your nails and then you want to cut them and the little pieces of nail go flying all over the barn. They've got a great way of being able to take a nail cutter. So these are just a commercial hardware store nail cutter. And uh, we threw some fly spray down on a piece of, uh, piece of tin foil so that when we put in the bed tech, the echo thing, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stick. We're just using the, the uh, soft sole pack, putting it in there and letting it set up. Taking a razor blade and cutting right through the, after it sets up, right through the middle. And you want to clean them up so that when you open them, the jaws up, you've got the equithane uh, soft sole pack material sitting in there. And when you cut your cut your nails, the nails don't go fly anywhere. They just stick right in between the jaws of the of the soft set, and you're not going to be picking them up all over the barn. And it works great. Now we've tried these with a pair of uh, like old diamond pull-offs, but the mass is pretty big, and so that the vet tech stuff doesn't stay as easily with that much material in there. So these are just a I think I went to Lowe's and bought a pair of uh, nail cutters. And it works great to keep your keep your nail heads from flying all over your barn. And you can shake them off uh, into your box. My scripts to hot seat shoes. Um, in my school, we, we use a lot of clip shoes because I'm... The greatest thing and the, and the worst thing that happened to us was pre-clip shoes. I see regularly guys take pre-clip shoes, they shape them cold, fine with me, but they set them cold and they hammer them in. If you watch the studies on this, you'll find that that constant pressure of those clips hammered into the wall starts remodeling P3 over about a year and a half to two years. And you'll start seeing indentations in P3 right where your side clips or quarter clips are at. Clips are meant to be shaped to the angle of the horse's foot and hot seated in. And we use some vice grips. I know that uh, W Brand makes the hot seat tongs. Those are really cool, except that People leave them laying around and horses step on them. So I go to I go to vice grips in my school. We take a pair of vice grips, and one of the problems that you have when you're starting out is how far do you smoke back that shoe? If you over smoke it, or you've got toe hanging out when you go to nail your shoe on, of course you don't have the perimeter fit anymore. So you gr grind one of the jaws down uh, on your vice grips so that you have one long and one short jaw. The long jaw now is going to be a stop. It's going to rest, rest against the, the dorsal hoof wall, and it'll be the stop for smoking. You can't over smoke the shoe that way. You can't pull it too far back. It'll, uh, it'll stop right there at the shoe. Nice, quick, easy way to keep from, uh, from setting your clips too far back in a foot, particularly if you, if you don't have it at the right angle. You go to smoke them, and you notice that you're only smoking just the base of the clip, not the full clip. You run over and knock them in a little bit, and come back and, and pound them again. Smoke them in. So you can see it acts as a stop. This is the easiest way to do it. That's a cadaver limb that uh, we just hold up in the air. It'd be easier to shoot that way if we could get away with it. Huh? Tongs. You can do a lot of things with tongs. Uh, the first thing we're going to show you is some self-locking tongs. And these are what you can use. Every one of us has been shooting horses and had some kind of hand injury at one time. That's either going to be from some cut or for some wear. Something's going to happen where your where your tong hand is uh, is not working very well. These are a pair of pretty inexpensive. Just diamond quarter inch tongs, but you can resize them to whatever shoes that you're using. Uh, if you use a particular cake shoe, you can resize them all the way up to 5 sixteenths. It's going to take one rein and draw out the rein just a little bit. From there, you're going to put a nice little hook on it, and it's going to make a pair of self locking jaws. You, uh, you, you can take the, uh, you can take the, the uh, tong head and adjust them to whatever size stock you're using. You can make these left or right, whichever you're the most comfortable with. On your tongue hand, some guys left or right handed, you can draw either one of them out. 
and how you can lock up, you can lock your stock into a pair of tongs, and you don't have to, to use your tongue hand with a lot of pressure on them. So from injuries and stuff, you can still keep doing your work if uh, if your tongue hand is, has become a little damaged for whatever reason. Works very very effective, and you can you can manipulate and adjust these so that the the, the, the tension is there for whatever you whatever you need, whatever kind of stock you use. You can also use a pair of tongs for carryover tongs, where you're going to take the the tong head and you can either use it in the uh, forge and you can grind it and make it about the size of a four punch and you can set it in your shoe and you can grind them uh, to make them specific to the type of shoe that you use so whatever brand of shoe you use make them specific and again you've got something you can you can carry over a hot shoe and not have to, uh, to quench it to check for fit another way to do that is to take the reins of these tongs and, uh, and draw them out to make <coughs> over a pair of carryover tongs you can draw them out both evenly Start your little little hook and end up with a little fishtail, uh, and those would be about the same size as your fritchel, and they would fit into your your nail holes. And again, you've got a pair of, of carryover tongs that work really well for checking fit or for uh, a clip shoe for hot seat. Pinch gouge. All of us have uh, have worked on horses that are base narrow. We'll tow it out. The client calls you up and complains that the, they loaded the horse up with four shoes. On a trail ride, but when they unloaded them from the from the trailer, a shoe fell off. Well, it, it's usually a 400-pound pinch cutter from this big <coughs> horse. Just taking your medial pinches and peeling them down. Uh, in that case, you just make a little gouge where you drive your nails, you gouge underneath the nail, and when you lay your pinch down, you're laying your pinch down flush inside the hoof, and there's nothing for them to grab. This is a this is an inexpensive little uh, diamond pinch cutter. Make sure you orientate it so you grind the right size, if you're right or left handed. You can put it on a belt sander, and you, and you use both sides of the belt sander so you get an even gouge. You can't do it just on one corner of the belt, right? you got to go to both sides. And then you clean the back up to make it more circular and put an edge on it, and you make yourself a nice little hoof gouge. And then you can just lay that clinch in flush with the foot, and you don't have anything sticking out for a horse to step on. Uh, Pull-offs. Mark Cardwell really, really drove this home. And that is until you clean the sulcus out really clearly, until you definitely get the sulcus clear, you can't see where your heels are at. You don't know what the depth of the sulcus are, you don't know the real length of your heels. A lot of guys use hoof knives. Hoof knives are not going to get right down and give you the full depth. A hoof pick, you know how that is. You put a hoof pick, you can put a hoof pick in your box every day, and when you get home at night, it's not there. And somebody's walked off with it, or you dropped it or something. And so you can take your pull-offs, and, uh, and you can make a, a hoof pick out of it. Just a simple little hoof pick. That you can use to, uh, to really get in there and clean out those sulcus so you can see the full depth of your heels and give you a landmark as to where to do your trimming. And you don't have to ruin a, uh, ruin a hoof knife doing that. So that's what it looked like. Doesn't take uh, just a little bit of work. Some guys make them a little, with a little more hook, a little fancier, but just something that when uh, you can clean out that foot aggressively and, and then just turn around and pull off your shoe. Old four punches. Uh, you know, I own horseshoe in school, and, then, and if it could be ruined by a student, it gets ruined. And four punches or uh, overwork those puppies, and they get short real fast and become useless. So you can take an old four punch, take a center punch mark and put a little hole in it, and make a really nice, when you grind the shape, the elliptical shape, uh, you can make a really nice little eye punch. Again, this is for a hoof pick. Take that little girl's horseshoe and cut it in half, and make a little horse head out of it for a hoof pick four, and it makes a really nice little eye. It beats a little dot, beats a little dot in the eye. It makes a nice little functional eye, so we hand those out. And you guys know I'm from California, right? So uh, I've got those equine innovation hoof stands in my in my school, the green ones, and the cradles. I love them. I think that's a, that Kevin did a phenomenal <coughs> job of those things. Uh, and I got 20 of them. Well, 21 of them. One of them's mine. And uh, whenever I need to use it, I can't find it. It's just never around. Somebody's always borrowed it. You can't tell which one's which. And so he came out with the pink ones. So I decided I'd get a pink one, and none of the guys in my class would ever use a pink one. And most of the girls that go into horseman school don't want to use pink either. Uh, and so the, the first place I used it at was an equine rescue program that we're at. And the ladies that own it stole it from me. <laughs> and uh, we came back a week later, and they had uh, California linked it for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that sweet? And I don't have to worry about anybody using that in my school. There's <laughs> not one little cowboy that we've seen to the host stand quite with this kind of bling on it. Old Bobby's, yes, right? 
Yeah, and the, and the gal that the, the three ladies that did this said that they'll take orders from you guys if you're interested in having a host van blinged out California style. Yeah, taking orders. Okay, a couple of the other tricks that, that came up that the guys were talking about in here. Uh, hammer handles. You know that the, some of the old guys will say keep your hammer hammers in water. Keep them swell up. Don't do that. We don't have any old growth hickory anymore. The new growth hickory, the, the grains of the, of the wood separate too fast. If you have them in water and you use them all day, they dry out and get wet pretty soon you don't have a hammer. Uh, one of the other guys in the audience said, uh, well, I heard about boiled linseed oil. So how do you boil linseed oil? Well, you don't, please. <laughs> uh, I, I know that because uh, I was going to hammer handles with a new class. When I started school, I, I, you know, there's no book you go to on how to do a horseman school. And so I was breaking all these hammer handles, and this old guy said, oh, boil linseed oil. So I put some linseed oil in a burner and heated it up. It, it boils at about 400 degrees, which is way hotter than you should get. And uh, I put all my hammers. I put in my driving hammers, all three hammers for clips. My driving hammers, put them in there, let them soak. And came back the next day, and uh, they were all charcoal. <laughs> so I had two days left for a class started where I had to find 60 hammer handles and uh, redo them all. The other thing about linseed oil is that if you use those, because they, they work good on wood, you just soak them in, it's called boiled linseed oil. You don't boil linseed oil. Um, the rags are highly flammable. And one of the things that, that have spontaneous combustion, if you take some rags full of linseed oil and throw them in the back of your shoe and rig and you wipe your handles down, it makes them pretty brown and makes them feel good. Uh, in a hot day, those things will cook off. You can start a fire inside your rig or inside your garage or shop. Don't, don't have those piles of, of rags with linseed oil. 